guys. Greetings and salutations. You know, last week I was working on the Suburban uh, on the front axle replacing those seals and it occurred to me that I've been working on my own uh, stuff since I was 14 years old. That's a long dang time. Over 35 years that I've been working on my own uh, stuff with, you know, with few exceptions. There was a period of time when uh, I just didn't have the time to, to repair the truck that I was working out of. I'd bring it to my cousin and let him work on it, just, just because, simply because I didn't have the time. It was easier for me to just pay him to to pay one of his guys to do it, and you know, it is what it is. So anyway, it just dawned on me that you know, for 35 years, I managed to not have to work on a front axle on a four x four, and I think that's the fourth. I think that Suburban is the fourth um, 4x4, that body style that I've owned. So here I am at the bench, and you know that's all tidied up, it's not leaking anymore. I'm here at the bench, and it occurred to me that I'm doing another thing that I have never had to have to do myself, and that's uh, put new pistons on connecting rods uh, off a small block Chevy. And uh, if you don't know, um, connecting rods are uh, press fit onto uh, onto the pistons. The connecting rods are press fit. So what I discovered was that there's an actual tool, a special tool, a fixture if you will, that allows you to hold the piston in position, set the, uh, the depth of the uh, wrist pin in the piston to its proper depth so that, and I'll show you in detail on the, on the tool that I made, but there's a special fixture. And I haven't done any research on purchasing one of those fixtures, but I'm willing to guess, you know, they're probably around a hundred bucks. And if you were doing uh, engines on a regular basis or professionally, it, that would be a small investment to make. Even if it was a couple hundred bucks, it would pay for itself in a couple engine rebuilds. But I don't know how many more engine rebuilds I want to do in my life. And um, I'm not, at this point, not willing to invest a hundred dollars in a tool that I may never use again. So. I did the next best thing. I built my own. Let me show it to you now. This holds the piston in place and keeps it secure. And there's a, you see this bolt here that's adjustable. And that sets the depth of the wrist pin. So taking into consideration that there's, you want this connecting rod to be centered on the piston. And you've got maybe two, three seconds maximum to get this thing in place. I'm gonna show you how this is done, but essentially, you gotta heat up the big end. I got these uh, uh, these wrist pins in the freezer. They've been there for a month. And so when you push these in, you, just, you heat this end up, it expands. You put this in the freezer, it constricts. You push the thing all the way in, and you got about two seconds to get this done. But you don't wanna, you wanna set this in. It's not exactly centered. Imagine if you will, so that when you push it all the way in, you hold this up against the side of the piston, so that when you back it out, it is centered. Does that make sense? I sure hope it does. So it's a pretty uh, quick operation. I got some map gas here in my um, um, my little torch set up, and it only takes a couple of minutes to heat this heat the uh, the small end of the rod up. And essentially, what you do is you I'm going to take a, a scotch Brite pad and clean this up so it's nice and silver shiny. And then uh, I'm going to heat it up until it just goes blue. And then you drop it in, put the wrist pin in, push it in all the way, and it's done. Bob's your uncle. All right, take two. It helps you uh, push the record button. So put the, uh, the piston in like so. Got this little piece of uh, plastic here to protect the piston from the bolt. Sorry for my arm. Snug that up. This isn't going to take very long. What you want to do is heat this small end up until it, it goes blue. 
Um, you don't want to get it any hotter than that. Uh, you don't want to get it red hot. If you don't get this thing red hot, you might as well throw this thing away. You just want to get it to where it changes to blue and then put the wrist pin in. What you're going to see is uh, that silver metal is going to change from straw color to brown and then to blue. Once it goes blue, you're done. see it on camera but hopefully it will. See how the connecting rod is all the way over to the one side? Now when you move it over to the center, the wrist pin will be centered in the piston. That's the purpose of that little doohickey right there. inch plate, 3 8 inch bolt, a spacer to hold the bolt up off the, the uh, plate, a nut welded to the plate that uh, pushes the piston against these two pins. This is just uh, 3 8 um, uh, round stock that's uh, press fit into a hole that's you know just a one drill size smaller than 3 8 I've got this all wrapped with electrical tape to protect the piston and I got another uh, 3 8 bolt I welded to a stand here. There's a washer welded to the head of the bolt that sets the depth for the uh, the wrist pin, and it's just that simple. I built this for nothing with scrap I had laying around here. So if you want to go ahead and uh, pause, take a screenshot of that, and copy that if you're so inclined, be my guest. So, if this was helpful, if it wasn't, go down there and click on subscribe. Give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down, whichever you prefer. Go ahead and hammer away at the keys and comment in the comment section down there if you're so inclined. Until next time, have fun, stay safe, shoot straight, don't smash your finger. You have yourself a splendid day. Now, I need to finish these pistons up. Okay. <laughs>